Welcome back to Lisa Cook's Food. Today we're gonna show you how to make a rainbow cornucopia. It's kind of gloomy outside. Let's make black cupcakes. How much more black can this be? And the answer is none. None more black. So we have before us more dyes, this time black. Oh boy. My goal is to make black cupcakes with black icing without a drop of food coloring. Okay, how are we gonna do that? Well, I've got two things to try here. I've got black cocoa powder and activated charcoal. This is food grade activated charcoal. So we thought we'd do some experiments to figure out when it's right to use each one of these. Uh, how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna make some icing. We're gonna start with royal icing because we tend to use royal icing for outlining and writing words, and black would be a handy color, especially if it wasn't gonna dye our mouths with that food coloring. So we'll find out which of these is better for royal icing, and then we'll make some buttercream icing as well. And we'll put all of that icing on top of a black cupcake. And we'll see how the texture is and see how it does our mouths and taste. Taste is the important part. Most important part, really. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with the royal icing, which is basically just meringue and powdered sugar. Now we know these are both powders, and from our past experience, we know we should mix these in in the dry stage. But I have a trick. We don't have to mix these in in the dry stage. Okay. I'll show you when we get there. First, we're gonna make royal icing, divide it into two batches, color those, and compare the two. I've got 30 grams of meringue powder and half a cup of water. Stir to break up any clumps and then let the machine do the rest. This is a little thinner than your standard meringue. Now I'm going to switch to the paddle attachment so I don't whip any large bubbles into my royal icing. And add my sifted powdered sugar. This is one pound. We're just stirring this in. This isn't quite smooth enough. I'm gonna let it keep going. Much nicer. That's a nice stiff royal icing. I'm not going to adjust the consistency now until after I've colored it in case our chocolate changes the consistency. I'm going to eyeball about a cup, weigh how much it is, and make sure that both bowls have the same weight of icing. Now I'm going to measure out black cocoa powder and activated charcoal powder. This is food grade. I wanna get about 20 grams of each of these in two separate bowls. Black cocoa powder is the type of cocoa they use in Oreo cookies. It creates that very dark color. That is very strong smelling, holy moly. Very strong chocolate smell. Okay, so that's 20 grams of the dark chocolate. You should know that this charcoal powder goes everywhere. Very black. Very black, absolutely black. So the trick we're gonna try is combining these powders with water, for royal icing we'll use water, to make a paste and add them little bits at a time until we get the color that we want. A scoop in a little bit at a time and stir, and because we don't want to add too much. We want to go easy at first. Wow. <laughs> oh, I like my odds. I think you stir it in really well, make sure there are no streaks, and let it develop. Wow. If that tastes good at all. <laughs> that is amazing. Winner. <laughs> now this has gotten quite thin. It's so thin. So I added too much water to my chocolate. Turned out really thin. I'm gonna try again. I've got another 85 grams of royal icing, another 20 grams of cocoa powder. I'm gonna add less water this time and see if I can come up with a pipeable consistency. By adding the same amount of water that Doug did, just half a tablespoon, I just get crumblies, which I'm afraid are gonna make chunks in here. So this method may not work. This method may not work for the cocoa. I'm gonna add this and just hope those little lumps come out. I'm gonna go with straight powder this time and really reach for that rich, dark brown. Still leans brown. It is not a true, true black. It might just pass, especially once it develops very, very dark. Can we compare it to yours? So at this point, mine looks truer black because yours still does have that charcoal gray. I wonder if you need to add some more. Let's do a little cleanup. We'll do a little experiment in piping with these and see where we land. Okay. So we have both of our black icings in baggies. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? Well, um, it's been about an hour, so these colors have developed quite nicely. This is black. That is super black. Um, but I did notice when I was bagging them that both have thinned a little bit since they were mixed. Uh, yours is super thin and almost drippy, so that may be a problem. I'd like us to try to pipe some thin lines, and we'll see how, how it does. Also, we'll see how I do. Oh, mine is 
clogged. Yours is very thin icing and it is running quite a bit. Mine is a nice piping consistency. And see, I had another little lump in there. So yes, the cocoa powder has left lumps. It entirely clogged the tip again. In order to get enough water into the cocoa powder, yeah. with enough of that cocoa powder, it ended up thinning it too much versus you right. could take a lot less powder on the charcoal in order to get it to this color. As a matter of fact, it, we figured out it took like half as much charcoal in order to get it. Yes. Do you want to try piping with the charcoal just to yes. see how much of this is just terrible skill? I mean, yeah, it's just too thin. But I mean, these things are right next to each other and you really cannot tell the difference in color between them. No, two. no. I, I don't think, honestly for Royal, I don't think that method really worked very well. So we need to taste these though. Yes, this is the charcoal. Okay, that just tastes like regular royal icing. Yeah. There's a little bit of something in there, but yeah. I don't think anyone's gonna notice. Mm -mm. All right, this is the chocolate. Remember, we have a lot of that very dark cocoa in there, so there's a chance that this is... Oh! That is a very dark chocolate bar. Oh, that is so bitter. I mean, I like dark chocolate, but that, I mean, that must be like 99% dark <laughs> chocolate. It's, it's really, really intense. Really, really intense. Super, super dark, super bitter. Um, still a little gritty, even. Yes, like yes, the powder has not fully dissolved. Mm -hmm. you, you can't decorate with that. Like, you can't. No. It would overpower any cookie you put it on. So using the black cocoa to get black royal icing. You, too far. It's too far. You can't too far. It's, the charcoal could totally work. I think if you get the consistency yes. right, yes. figure out the process on exactly. I'm you know, wondering why it thinned so much. Yeah. I mean, I think you would end up needing to add it to the powdered sugar and just add it in with the dry ingredients, figure out the exact right amount for the ratio for the powdered sugar that you want to do. I tell you what, maybe royal icing is not the right experiment. Okay. Let's try this with some buttercream. No. I refuse to taste that ever again. Okay, agreed. Let's leave the chocolate out. Let's use the charcoal. Okay. And we can do two things. We can make a good chocolate icing and add a little charcoal to it. And we can make a vanilla icing and add enough charcoal to turn it black. Okay, so we can make a black vanilla icing yes. using the charcoal. Let's see. All right. We each have 100 grams of buttercream. I have chocolate and he has vanilla. We're going to use charcoal powder to turn this black and see how it goes. I think mine is at the stopping point. Um, oh, wow, holy moly. Yes, I think that this will turn into a very deep black once it matures. Starting with chocolate is always a good way to go. We opted not to go with the black cocoa this time. This is just regular cocoa powder, not even Dutch processed, which would make a nice deep color as well. If you were using black food coloring, his fingers would be dyed black or green or purple. You know how those black colors can turn green or purple depending on what they're made with. He'd be doomed to black fingers for, for days. Oh, really? Yes, but I think this is gonna wash right off. This charcoal does really well. I'm gonna go test that. We learned from the royal icing that taste is important. So let's give these a taste. This kind of reminds me of our other food dye video that we made where we used red icing made out of beets. It wasn't good. Yeah, you should check that out after this. Wow. Black vanilla buttercream. Black cream. vanilla buttercream. All right, let's taste the chocolate. Chocolatey. It's chocolatey. Chocolate buttercream. Mm-hmm, but it's black. So this is the chocolate buttercream and this is the vanilla. The chocolate is a little deeper black. This one is a nice deep graphite gray, and I bet once this icing cures, that's gonna look pure black. Yeah, and that happens pretty much with all food colorings of any kind for buttercream. If you want more info on that, check out our other mega comparison video. I think charcoal is a great way to dye icing. Yep, each one of these actually only has five grams of the charcoal for 100 grams of buttercream. It seems to work equally well for chocolate and vanilla buttercream, and it was the better choice for the royal icing. So what do you think? Do you have any other ways to make delicious black icing? Leave a comment below. If you've liked this video, hit thumbs up and hit subscribe if you wanna see more videos on kitchen education and recipes. See you next time.